Hey everyone, Matt here from Docs Run, and today we're gonna to talk about some of the rare stability trail shoes. One of the most frequent questions we've gotten recently is, hey, I like all the stability shoe reviews that you do, but I'm looking to get on trail and there's more technical stuff. I don't see any stability trail shoes. What is out there? And to be honest with you, there's not a lot out there. This is actually very limiting for me for many, many years. Like there's some things I could find stable neutral, like the Speed Goat has always had nice sidewalls and a kind of a wider base that worked really, really well. But true stability trail shoes are very, very rare. So I wanted to kind of go, hey, what are some of the top three ones that I really enjoyed? And I'm also gonna share a couple that I haven't tried that you might wanna consider if this is something you're interested in. So big three that I've really enjoyed over the years, one of which is new, is the Topo Mountain Racer 3, the Hoka Stinson 7, and the Salomon Genesis. All of these have true stability elements to them that make them stability shoes, but they are all different and have some similarities. So the hope is I'm gonna go through some basic specs and kind of introduce, hey, which ones have this factor that you might be looking for? Which one had this? Which one has this? So hopefully you can decide which one of these might work best for you if you are someone that needs stability on trail. So we'll start with the, start with the Topo Mountain Racer 3 just because it is a favorite of mine. One of the things I like about the shoe is it's got the anatomic toe box that uh, Topo is known for. It's got a, it's 9.8 ounces for men's size 9, women's size 10 and a half. 33 and a half in the heel, 28 and a half in the forefoot for a five millimeter drop. It's got some really good outsole on it. It's always felt like a shoe that runs faster than it weighs. And again, the anatomic upper has always been really, really good to me and felt really, really, really good. The stability comes from this piece right here of what feels like two different foams. And every time I've worn this shoe in all its versions, even though it wasn't always listed as one, it feels like there is a medial post in the midfoot. It's not the most aggressive shoe of these shoes. I would probably put it in the mild stability and the least stable of this be, still being a stability shoe. So more of a mild stability shoe, but it's enough that gets me, which I generally need mild stability, through longer runs. I've done some great longer runs, some faster runs in the shoe, and it's worked really, really well. The lugs that Topo uses are Vibram. They work really, really well. This actually has some versatility on road. I wouldn't use it too much for that, but it's been really, really good for digging into a variety of terrain when I just want my foot to be able to handle some swelling and I want a little more anatomic toe box. So that's kind of where this shoe comes in. Definitely a racing shoe on the lighter end of trail shoes and definitely can pick up the pace. The next one is kind of the opposite of end of the spectrum, the Hoka Stinson 7 that David and I actually rated as one of the most stable shoes of last year because it really feels like that. So it is a hefty shoe. It's coming in at 12.2 ounces for men's size nine, women's size uh, 10 and a half. There is a 43 and a half millimeter heel, 38 and a half millimeter forefoot for a five millimeter drop. It really feels like a behemoth of a shoe. It's not, once you get used to it, it rolls super nicely. There is zero flexibility to this shoe. And there are these massive sidewalls and Hoka's new stability technology H frame that's in here where it's got a really stiff piece here and pieces that extend here. It really feels like a stable shoe without being it's like guidance but definitely like all right this feels very very stable so it does have the elements to be a true stability shoe because they're using the same thing in the hook of gaviota now so it's technically the same part the thing that makes this unique is if you want to do a long run and you want the max amount of protection and you want a good amount of room this is a great option for you. This is probably one of the widest Hoka's I've ever tried. And yes, you have to see, I had to lock the laces down to get a secure fit, but foot swelling, anything like that is really, really good that this shoe can handle. So it makes it very unique for some other options. Not something I would ever use for racing. This is kind of an easier day shoe. The other thing that this is the most versatile of the, of the different shoes because the outsole is not so aggressive that it cannot handle road. This is really meant as like an all-terrain vehicle meant it can handle road, it can handle trail. It's not the most the deepest lug so personally i would choose the other two if it's really technical terrain but if you want to just bomb down solid terrain and you want those factors that we talked about in a really high level stability shoe probably the, the most stable of all the shoes i'm going to talk about this might be a really really good option for you the other one that kind of fits differently than the other two and is the lightest of this group and the also the most narrow is the Salomon Genesis. So this one's a little bit new to me. I've got a couple miles on it and I've actually really enjoyed it because it's got Salomon's active chassis here, which you can see massive sidewall here, massive sidewall here, and feels like the most medial support of all the shoes that I've talked about, even though overall, the Stinson 7 feels like the most stable. Like it's like, feels like a high level stability shoe. This feels like a more moderate one. This has the most medial arch pressure if that's something that you want. So men's size nine, women's size 10 and a half is coming in at 9.7 ounces. 
The stack height is 33 millimeters in the keel, 25 in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. So the highest drop of this group compared to the five millimeter drop in the previous ones. Like I said, got active chassis. So if you want security and locked in, but want that medial post-like feel, even though there's not a post, it's a large sidewall. This is one of the best ones. The difference from the other two is obviously it's the lightest one. To me, feels the fastest also because it's got the most narrow fit and it's very low volume. So if narrow feet that maybe the other two aren't going to work, this one's also going to work really, really well for you. My own only caveat is be careful because I've had some creasing in the forefoot that you can actually see here, which has taken several miles for me to get over. Once I got through that, it's been totally fine. But this is a very unique, probably one of the faster options out there if the fit works for you. So he, those are three of the options out there that I think if you need stability on trail that you should consider. There are a couple other ones that I have not tried. So the Salmon Trabuco series, sorry, A6 Trabuco series is another option out there. However, I've heard the most recent one has kind of done away from the stability. So that may not be an option. The La Sportiva Bushido 2 is also, also a shoe that's been listed as a stability shoe. I have not tried it. So if you've tried those other two shoes, would you please comment below and let me know, hey, how stable are they? So people that are watching this video go, hey, there's some other options out there besides the three that I talked about. But these are the three main ones that I've tried at least recently that I've really, really enjoyed. So if you need stability options on the trail, you should consider one of these three.